Even good people do crazy things when they're scared. Ought to be Diamond City's motto. What kind of history are we talking here? Well, this one's straight out of the archives. Once upon a time, in the land of Boston, there lived a king of organized crime. Eddie Winter. He was a bad man who did a lot of bad things. Hurt a lot of innocent people. But he knew the end was coming. So he sealed himself inside a personal shelter, located underneath the sub shop he used as a headquarters. An evil king in a sub shop? Does a meatball monster show up at some point? Yeah, from what I've heard, the pastrami golem is the one you really have to watch out for. Anyway, if you're done being a wise ass, the story gets even more twisted. The arrogant bastard wanted to cheat death, live forever, so he could come out of that shelter someday into this brave new world. Sound familiar? Only Eddie didn't want to be a frozen banana. No cryo sleep for him, no. He invested his money in some sick, crazy radiation experiment. You don't mean to tell me he used that radiation to... That's right. Eddie Winter went and turned himself into a ghoul. 200 years before it was fashionable. Hell, he was probably the first one. And I'm convinced that he's still locked inside that shelter. Safe and sound. Ready to come out and begin his evil reign all over again. I'm gonna find him and kill him, so that never happens. You in? I don't get it, Nick. Why kill Eddie Winter, even if he is still alive? This sounds like some kind of vendetta. No, I've got memories of a, of a girl. My girl. They're not really my memories, I know that. They're Nick's. But the girl... She was real. She was beautiful. And innocent. And Winter killed her. Now he's got to pay the price. So, knowing that, are you in? All right, Nick. Let's get the bad guy. You're a good man. Now, I know where Winter's vault is, but the door is sealed with a complex numerical code. Lucky for us, Winter's arrogance knew no bounds. Back in the day, he recorded ten holotapes, incriminating different criminal associates. On each one, he hit a single number. We find all of those holotapes, we get all the numbers. We get all the numbers, we get the code. And then we get Winter. I've been putting together a file on this one for a while now. There's a pair of holotapes in here worth listening to. Uh, including one of Winter's that I managed to snatch from the Cambridge Police Evidence Lockup before getting swarmed by ferals. I just need to find the other nine and bring them to me. You know, I think I found all the others. Take them. No fooling. Wow. That's some real solid detective work. Uh, they're older than dirt, but they've got Eddie's paw prints all over them. These are the real deal. And they've still got the code pieces in them. Let me run them through the old processor. Got it. One, nine, five, three, seven, two, eight, four, zero, six. That old thug's holed up in Andrew's station. Now, let's go bring down Eddie Winter. Let's not keep Eddie waiting.
see the look on what's left of Eddie's face when we pop that lock of his. Not keep Eddie waiting. That filthy toad's right on the other side of that door. Why don't you do the honor? Sure. One nine five three seven two eight four zero six. Fuck? Who the fuck are you? Eddie, it's me, your old pal, Seamus McFuck yourself. All this time, and the first person to walk through my door is a wise ass. Why couldn't you have been a sexy blonde? Just how the fuck did you get? No, no way. Not after all this time. Don't tell me you actually cracked my code. In the hollow tapes? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, it's only been what? 200 years? <laughs> well, look, I'm not sure what you thought you'd find. Gold, jewels, the secrets of the universe. But you get me. One guy. A ghoul, I guess you'd call me. Just living, surviving, and what I got, you can't have. That code? <laughs> it was a joke. I just wanted to prove how dumb those feds were. Turns out, pretty dumb. So take your asses someplace else. I'm not going anywhere until I get what I came for. Yeah? And what's that? And who are you, huh? You look kind of familiar. But what are you, some kind of robot? Is that what it's like out there now? A world of robot overlords? I knew it. The name's Valentine. Nick Valentine. Remember me? Valentine? The cop? Is that who you're supposed to be? Sorry, pal, but you ain't Nick Valentine. You're just some kind of, uh, machine. You killed my fiance, Jennifer Lance. There's some crimes even you can't get away with, Winter. Your fiance? You mean Valentine's fiance. Pretty girl. Shame what happened to her. But hey, you? Or, you know, the real Valentine? He should have backed off when he had the chance. But what gives, Robot Man? Why do you even care? Some girl gets whacked 200 years ago, and you come into my home, acting like a hot guy? Christ, look at you. You're not even alive. Then I guess I'm in good company. Your funeral! We're done here. There's one more thing I've got to do. I... I wouldn't mind the company if you wanted to tag along.
him through. Detective Valentine, Captain Widmark here. I'd just like to reiterate how excited we here at the Boston Police Department are that you'll be joining our investigation. Commissioner Turner has already regaled me with the tales of your adventures in Chicago. As you know, Edward L. Eddie Winter has been a pox on this beautiful city for nearly two decades. Extortion, murder, racketeering, kidnapping, name a crime he's committed. The epitome of a cold-blooded, brilliant, slippery crime boss. Fortunately for us, over the years, Winter has also developed that most self-destructive of character traits, uh, supreme arrogance. Starting a little over a year ago, Winter stopped coding his correspondences and began communicating entirely via unencrypted holotape. Each one addressed the subject in question and very clearly signed off by Winter himself. He's obviously mocking the authorities. He knows we're monitoring his communications. He doesn't care. Winter thinks he's untouchable. He's wrong. This is when the game changes. Those holotapes are the key to building a case against Eddie Winter, and they're what this task force will focus on. His crimes, his words. Total self-incrimination. Get those holotapes, and we get Winter. This is it. In this spot, 200 years ago, one of Eddie's boys put a bullet in Jenny Lamb's back. Now Eddie's as dead as Jenny. And Nick. I... I'm at a loss. All I know is that without you, Eddie'd still be at large. I'm glad I could help. Seems like it meant a lot to you. You don't know the half of it. Winter was it. The only reminder left of the original Nick Valentine. The last proof outside of some long lost institute archive I was ever just a mechanical copy of some cop from a bygone era. I'm not sure how to feel. Don't you see, Nick? You're finally free. There is no other Nick anymore. Just you. No, I wish it was that easy. But it's not. Because I was Nick Valentine. I had his memories, his, his fears, all that poor bastard's hope. And I remember getting the call to head to some lab in Cambridge to get that neurotrans whatever. And the next thing I know, I'm in a trash heap. My family, my home, my entire life gone. Then I discover all those things that they weren't even mine. Everything I ever was belonged to Nick. I'd hoped with winter gone, the last hint of that old world snuffed out, I could, I could finally be free. But being out here with you, what I, what I finally realized after all this time was that taking down winter, it wasn't about Nick or Jenny or even you or me. It was about justice, about doing what's right. And that act of goodness, that's ours. All the good we've done, that's ours. And ours alone. And even if that's the only thing in this world that I can ever claim as mine, not Nick's, not the Institute's, but mine, then I can die happy. And none of it would have ever happened if it weren't for you. 
I'm not sure I'll ever be able to thank you for that. You don't have to, Nick. We're friends. This is what friends do. <laughs> you can't stop being noble now, can you? Well, come on then. We're not helping anyone standing around here. Yeah, that is if you're, if you're still interested in traveling together. I wouldn't blame you if you wanted some time on your own after all this. Of course. Let's do it. I'm glad to hear it. Come on, let's get out of here. <laughs>